Hey guys, Desler Magic here, and there is some excitement in the air, and it is completely manufactured. It is spoiler season for Aether Revolt, which is kind of weird considering it's not. If you're confused, let me catch you up with the shortest possible explanation. Usually spoilers don't come out now, I honestly am way too lazy and disinterested to look up how early the spoilers are supposed to come out, but considering Aether Revolt is releasing on January 20th, um, not yet. I mean, I would have said around Christmas, maybe, maybe they're doing it earlier because of Christmas, I don't know. Whatever, it's like two or three weeks early and we get a couple Aether Revolt spoilers. Um, it is possible that they did it in response to the crappy cell phone pick leaks, um, which honestly might have been them on purpose pretending it's not them. It's not like they've said it wasn't. I mean, just because it was a crappy cell phone picture doesn't mean that it wasn't them. So just to wrap it all up in a nice little Christmas box for you, one of two things happened. So either one, Wizards is basically lying to us, or at the very least being incredibly misleading by making it look like some rushed physical card picture instead of a digital card image leak, and it actually was them behind the leaks the whole time. They're basically just doing it because they think it'll gather more, you know, shares and likes and, and people talking about it if it looks like it was some, oh, dangerous, evil criminal leak ahead of time. Oh, how amazing, as if that doesn't happen every damn set. You know what I'd be surprised by at this point, Wizards? This would surprise me. I would make a video about this. It would be so significant if you didn't leak cards ahead of time for the next set. If we don't get some freaking potato camera pictures of Amon Ket like a month and a half before it comes out, I might actually have a heart attack. Now, option number two is that Wizards doesn't take card security uh, seriously at all. They claim that they uh, take it very seriously and they have a very well-planned, you know, marketing and PR style, like, arrangement of what order the cards come out and when, and when we know what, and when each mechanic is released. And, you know, they plan it very carefully. And then they throw it all out the window because they don't give a crap and they just let anybody see an image of the damn cards. They'll just send them to anybody. Who cares? At least that's what it appears to be. I'm voting for number two. I lean towards number two just because Wizards screws everything up. They basically can't even publish a short web article without typos in it. If they can't even be bothered to read their own announcements before they hit submit, I feel like they might take card security about as seriously. So those are the two options. They're either liars or they're incompetent idiots. Honestly, I think it's both given, you know, the past history in the last year. But in this particular case, I think they're idiots. That said, I do believe that these last couple leaks are actually from Wizards. I think I saw them actually posting them. Uh, they're also digital with, like, the transparent corners, etc. It looks like they're showing off the Planeswalkers from the dual decks, as well as one little bonus. Oh, two little bonuses, actually. First up, from the Planeswalker deck, which is, of course, the sealed 60-card, 100% standard legal deck that is guaranteed to contain cards that you actually want to build certain standard decks, so, you know, definitely buy one or two or three or four. We've got a Johnny Valiant Protector. Ha <laughs> ha, they made him cost six again. They did the same thing that they did in the in the last Planeswalker deck where they just made Nissa and Chandra cost six so that it's completely unreasonable that you'd ever cast that in a normal game and it's just beyond all hope and standard. That is so funny. I can't wait to see the real one. So this Johnny has um, put two 1-1 one -one counters on up to one target creature. So, of course, it says up to, so that if there are no creatures on the battlefield, or even worse, if there's just none on your side, you do not have to target anything. You can just plus two him. That's a fantastic ability. I mean, they're permanent counters. I mean, hey. Plus, uh, plus two ain't no joke, but he has to get to 11 from four, so, you know, good luck with that. But his second ability is also a plus, though it's only plus one. It states that you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, put that card into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, kind of like, I don't know, evolutionary leap, but a little bit better. It's definitely not bad, I mean, especially as a plus. Even as a zero, it wouldn't be that bad. It could be considered him protecting himself, because the next thing you could do is cast that creature, and then you'd for sure have a blocker. So he's already looking pretty good, even though he costs six. His ultimate is negative 11, though, and that is never going to happen, but um, put X-1-1 one, one counters on target creature where X is your life total. That creature gains trample until end of turn. An ultimate ability that doesn't use an emblem and ends at the end of turn? Uh, I mean, yeah, the counters stick around, but, I mean, it's not great. Although, let's say your life total's even at, 
15 at that point. Okay, 15 counters forever, and until end of turn, it also has Trample? That ain't messing around. I mean, that is really similar to the Nissa from the last Planeswalker deck. So overall, he's really not that bad, so let's compare him to uh, the actual Ajani, which is uh, going to be found normally in the booster packs. In case you didn't catch the joke, he also costs 6, so uh, good luck with that. Honestly, in white-green, uh, that is doable, though. His first ability is plus 2, reveal the top 3 cards of your library, put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, so a definitely souped-up version of the other Ajani's ability. Although I should mention, it is strangely a clone of his plus one ability, sort of. I'd almost rather put two counters on something. I mean, if you have six mana to spend every turn, okay, two non-land permanents, you know, whatever, not bad. You can start stuffing stuff onto the battlefield, especially blockers. Now, his second ability is actually a negative two, and it states exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Uh, that's complete crap. Consider you paid 6 for him, and you'd have to negative 2 him to do it, and you're trying to get to 9. That is bad. I mean, yeah, you could get rid of something absolutely huge, assuming it doesn't have hexproof. But, um, I mean, the bigger it is, the more dangerous it is, the more life you give them. I don't like that ability at all. I think, honestly, so far, he's complete crap compared to the kind of joke Ajani. Honestly, they really screwed up with that one, but let's see what his negative 9 is. Put 5 one, 1 counters on each creature you control and 5 loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. That is insane. Now the only reason it isn't insane is because if you're playing a planeswalker heavy deck, okay great, um, he'd be almost the last one out, so you know maybe you use the negative abilities on the other planeswalkers and now you're just kind of refilling them so that maybe you could ultimate them on the same turn, you know, depending upon the, the usage uh, order. Um, but then if it's mostly creatures, you don't get a big benefit from the Planeswalker, and once again, it's the biggest trap in all of Magic. I've mentioned this a million times. Oh, you get a 5-5 counter on every single creature you control? That would be awesome the more creatures you have out. Let's say you have six creatures on the field. Well, if you have six creatures on the field, you're going to win the game anyway. It's another one of those abilities where you can just completely erase it and put, if you're already winning the game, win the game even more. I mean, yeah, taking, like, a winning board state and then driving it even harder and hitting them even harder, like, there's something to be said for it, but in general, those abilities are kind of second-rate compared to something that'll turn the whole game around. Like, if you're losing, now use this ability. So, if he brought out, I don't know, five lion tokens that are all three threes with first strike, now that would turn the game around. If you're down to one creature because he blew up everything else, I mean, five counters, it's not nothing, but it's not, you know, nine loyalty... If you do completely ignore the creature part and you go just straight up Super Friends Planeswalker Super Bomb, which is kind of a deck right now actually, then that ability actually is pretty good. The creature part is crap though, but overall, I mean his ultimate costs more, um, but theoretically it's easier to get there and I just think he's more powerful, more solid, more useful in a subtle way long term than this one. I just really can't believe that. I mean, unless I'm missing some kind of, like, combination or something that makes counters really, really good or, I don't know, something that says if your opponent has 30 life, they lose the game. I don't know. Like, I might be missing something that I don't know about yet, but <laughs> otherwise, he just doesn't look that great compared to the allegedly worse version. Now, you're probably wondering who's in the other Planeswalker deck, and I'm very excited about this. It's Tezzeret. In fact, his name is Tezzeret, Master of Metal. So, well, let's just get this out of the way. I mean, come on, he already looks like if he's not leading the Aether Revolt on the weekends or something, he's in a metal band. Just look at that hair, it screams metal. Wizards, if you want to print an unset, like, unhinged 2.0, just do it. Like, don't just start naming stuff Master of Metal. Now, if it was, like, an awesome, like, robotic AI artificer, and they are like, Master of Metal, I'd be like, dude, that's, like, final boss level stuff. That is such a perfect name. You know, or, like, some kind of, like, mega colossus that's, like all the other ones Power ranger together. That would be the Master of Metal, but this guy looks so metal to begin with, you just, you got the double entendre going. Anyway, stupid metal puns aside, except I'm totally leaving that image up, 
This version of Tezzeret comes out uh, with five loyalty for six. His plus one abilities reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card. Put that card in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Gee, that sounds familiar. Now, the turn he comes out, you'll plus one him, and then he'll be at six, which is only two away from his ultimate. The second ability, though, is negative three, bit of a drawback there, and uh, target opponent loses life equal to the number of artifacts you control. In other words, target opponent loses the game, so you don't really even need to read his ultimate because that will win the game by itself. Uh, remember, this is supposed to be a, quote, non-competitive card. I fear what the actual Tezzeret is going to, well, first of all, be named, and secondly, look like in the standard set. Oh god, what does this negative eight do? Gain control of all artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. Period. Like, as in not until end of turn. What the hell? What is he, a Dark Archon from StarCraft 1? Actually, they can only target one creature, come to think of it. What the hell? This is Willbreaker on steroids. This is OP as crap. Holy crap. There is currently a card out that says Planeswalkers enter the battlefield with one extra loyalty. I know he doesn't protect himself at all. I mean, his plus one eh, I mean, is debatable. Artifact creature, maybe. Eh, yeah, right. Paid six to cast him. I don't think he can really protect himself. But if you can protect him and, um, hello, blue, black. Yeah, you can protect him. Then you're set. I mean, you're going to get that ultimate off, and you could just outright kill them with your negative three. I mean, you could just put out a bunch of servos, which is, you know, pretty easy to do, at least in black-white. Uh, Blue-black, it's not impossible either. This guy is powerful as hell. I mean, they're just cranking up the power on these Planeswalker decks to the point where you've got to buy four of them to get four Tezzerets. Unless the other Tezzeret is literally a clone of him but more powerful, which, by the way, would be broken as hell, I think people are going to basically be required to buy the Planeswalker decks, and that's something that they said you would not have to do to, quote, be competitive or build a competitive deck. Well, they're lying the first time, and they're lying even more the second time. I mean, besides costing six, this guy is modern good. I mean, I would try to cram him into, like, a Tron deck or something. I mean, it is for generic. That's not that far of a stretch, honestly. A lot of Tron decks that I've seen are blue lately. Let me just take the opportunity to say I knew they would do this. I absolutely knew that Wizards would make the Planeswalker decks that are 100% standard legal so powerful to the point where you could only get the cards from them and you needed the cards from them. Now, you don't have to necessarily go out and buy the actual full Planeswalker deck, and it does come with two boosters, so it effectively costs next to nothing. Uh, but, you know, buying the singles online, I mean, how many people are really going to break them open? Is it even a double print run? I don't know. I'm worried about the availability of them at all, putting them above MSRP. That would be a disaster. Either way, they, they screwed up. I mean, they really should have made both of the Planeswalkers from the decks a lot less powerful. They do cost six, though, which is an enormous drawback. I mean, you'd have to build your whole deck around them, but if they build the decks like they did last time, which I believe they actually said they would do, you will have a way to fetch Tezzeret and Ajani from your deck. There's a card that will just outright go get them. So there's your synergy, so then the rest of it is mana ramp and a little bit of control delay, and there you go, you win the game. That's pretty messed up, wizards. Thanks a lot. At least the decks are dirt cheap. Still, they lied to us, but, you know, whatever. Hey, guess what? I've got a bonus spoiler for you. Oh, yes, this one just came out. Heart of Kiran or Kyren, or... I don't know. I never heard of the guy. You know what? It's an airship. Let's just call it a Kirov airship. You know, paint, paint a little eyes and a little, little mouth on the front. It's from Red Alert 2, and so is my name, in case you totally didn't get that one. Well, this card's already broken as balls. I want to go play Pokemon. I really do. We're like... Two days into spoiler season and I don't want to play Magic. Good job, Wizards. This is Power Creep in vehicle form. You can get a 4-4 legendary but who gives a crap vehicle with flying and vigilance. It does have crew 3, which kind of negates the whole I cost 2 thing. But, I mean, there are actually two cost 3-1s uh, right now, like Core Sidemaster, whatever. I forgot his actual name. It's Core something. It's the one that looks like he's from Dot Hack Sign. You know, that guy. Here's the problem. You may remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker you control rather than pay Heart of Kirin's crew cost. God, this is so broken already. We don't even know the rest of the damn cards. I can't wait to see the unplayable OP as ball state of standard as soon as Aether Revolt is released. I guess let's start building the modern deck. No, I'm totally not overreacting. Heart of the Kiran is ridiculous. It does only fit in a very specific type of deck, but need I remind you that the other Ajani fetches freaking artifacts. 
Now, if there's one thing that Wizards got right, although this is clearly not a digital leak, it might be some kind of outside Wizards leak or pretend outside Wizards leak, honestly don't give a crap at this point. But one thing I will compliment them on if they had something to do with this is they gave people a ton of notice to go find another game or build a modern deck. That was very considerate of them. Now, if you're about to type down in the comment section that I'm overreacting and the cards aren't as powerful as they look, yeah, you're wrong. I mean, this isn't like, oh, maybe it'll take off, maybe it won't, and then the card falls flat because it doesn't really work with anything, even though it's unbelievably powerful, which happens sometimes. This is like when we saw Gisela. People looked at it and they're like, holy crap. And now it's like two months later, three months, six months, I don't even know, later, and people are still like, holy crap. Same with the, the last uh, Liliana. I mean, she's like $40 still. When you see an OP card, you know it's an OP card. It's not like, maybe. So far, everything I've seen is pretty darn competitive. Worse yet, most of them are in Planeswalkers decks. I mean, they could not have screwed up worse. Everything I've seen, I mean, it's not hexproof, it's not shroud, it doesn't have evasion, it can't flicker itself. I mean, it can all be destroyed. It's still doable. It's not like game ruining broken, but it's going to be a very annoying uh, standard cycle, I think. So what do you guys think? Uh, are there even worse combos that I haven't even seen yet? What do you think about the impending disaster floating in the standard that appears to be on the horizon? What do you think of Totally Metal Master of Metal Tezzeret? Wow, let's hear it for Tezzeret. I, for one, cannot even handle how metal he is right now. Well, I'm gonna go jam out to some awesome death metal and pretend I never saw these cards. I'll see you guys next video. Oh, and make sure you like, like, and subscribe, and comment, and all this other crap, or YouTube will like kill my channel or something.